Hello everyone, my name is Jin Su Park and I am a graduate student in the Bernardi Group at the Department of Applied Physics and Material Science at Caltech. And in this session, I will talk about electron phonon matrix elements and their interpolation using Perturbo. The electron phonon matrix elements are the overlap matrix between two clock states and a phonon perturbation potential. If you look at the schematic here, there's an initial electron with an index n and momentum k. It scatters off to a different block state with index m and momentum k plus q by emitting or absorbing a phonon with mode index nu and uh, momentum index q. The amplitude of this is denoted with g, uh, which is this evaluation on the right. If you plot this electron photon matrix elements, uh, throughout the Berlin zone, then it will look like this two graphs on the right here, where this is for gallium arsenide, and this one is for MOS2. You can see that the electron photon matrix elements vary significantly throughout the Berlin zone. Uh, for example, near the gamma point, it goes to a very large value. However, for other points, it is relatively smaller, both for gallium arsenide and also for MOS2. Also, if you look at the uh, branches here, for a specific Q point, there are multiple values of the Gs depending on the phonon mode nu. Accurately obtaining these Gs is the key for charge transport and electron dynamics analysis. And this is done accurately using Perturbo. This is the workflow of Perturbo. We start from DFT and compute the band and the wave functions on the coarse grid KC and then we use density functional perturbation theory, DFPT, to compute the phonons and DVSCF, which is the phonon perturbation potentials, on a coarse grid QC. These two steps are done using quantum espresso. And then Perturbo reads these two information and compute the electron phonon matrix elements G on coarse KC and QC grids. Then Wanya 90 is used to compute the maximally localized Wanya functions. And then these two are combined to compute and store the electron phonon matrix elements in real space Vanya function basis. More about the Gs in the Vanya function basis will be discussed in later slides. And then Perturbo uses this information to interpolate and get the Gs on fine KF and QF grids and subsequently does transport and dynamics analysis. I would like to emphasize that interpolation is crucial in obtaining the Gs. Uh, for typical dynamics and charge transport analysis, we need a very dense grid of Gs, typically of order 100 by 100 by 100 for both K and Q grid. This is impractical to be done by DFPT alone. So what we do is we compute the electron phonon matrix elements Gs on a coarse grid of order 10 by 10 by 10 uh, which is de denoted as uh, orange markers here in this Berlin zone schematic. And then we use interpolation to go to finer groups of order 100 by 100 by 100. Now I will talk about the electron phonon matrix elements in real space. The electron phonon matrix elements in real space are the Fourier transform of the electron phonon matrix elements in reciprocal space. I showed you this schematic which was the electron phonon matrix elements in reciprocal space. Uh, here, Gs were computed where the electrons were in block wave functions and the phonons were uh, in phonon mo mode and momentum basis. If we do a Fourier transformation on this quantity, what we get is the electron phonon matrix elements in real space. Uh, now, Gs are the overlap between two localized bases which can be either in the Vanier function basis or atomic orbitals, uh, which are, and the, the potential in the middle are the atomic displacements. One great quant uh, property of this electron phonon matrix elements in real space is that they are mostly short ranged, meaning that if we uh, increase the distance between the two localized spaces or the atom displacement position, then this uh, quantity decays very rapidly. As you can see in this graph here, if we increased RE, then 
uh, the amplitude of this G decreases exponentially. This is true for both the using atomic orbitals and also Banyan functions. So if we assume that the interaction is non-zero only if the electron distance Re and displacement position Rp are within a few atomic distances apart, we can perform an inverse Fourier transformation starting from G in the real space to obtain the Gs on any reciprocal space grid K prime and Q prime. For more detailed information about this interpolation procedure using Banyan functions or atomic orbitals, uh, I would like to uh, give you these two references. Also more detailed information about the Banyan functions, you can refer to this reference This is an example giving the interpolation in silicon and diamond using perturbo. For the electron photon matrix elements, uh, the initial state was the valence band maximum. And the final states are the valence band maximum uh, by varying the Q. And the phonon index was fixed to this mode here. The interpolation results in the upper panel is for silicon and for lower panel is for diamond. In left panel, it's using atomic orbitals, and the right panel is using Banyan functions. Uh, in general, you can see that the interpolated results, which are in red, green, or blue, are in very good agreement with uh, the direct DFT plus DFPT calculations for both atomic orbitals and Banyan functions in silicon and diamond. <clears throat> One good property of Banyan functions is that it exactly reproduces the Gs at coarse grid points. However, uh, the generation of the Vanya functions can often be a bottleneck. Uh, interpolation using Vanya functions is currently implemented in Perturbo and is included in the released version. Uh, for the atomic orbitals, one great uh, advantage is that we don't have to generate the atomic orbitals as they are mostly predetermined. Uh, and that's one great advantage over the Vanya functions. And we have uh, plans to include it in the future version of Perturbo. Now, if you look closely near the gamma point, uh, you can see that there are error uh, here between the interpolated results and the direct DFPT results. These sort of errors are due to the long range electron phonon interactions. The long range electron phonon interactions are the interactions that are not short range. So this means that even if you go to coarser, uh, finer and finer coarse grids, uh, their interpolation results will not match the direct DFPT results. And so brute force interpolation is ineffective. There are two major um, types of this long range electron phonon interaction. First is the, is the Frehlich interaction. This interaction happens because if there's an oscillating dipole in the solid, it generates a long range electric field so this type of interaction happens for the longitudinal and optical phonon modes of polar materials. And in this case, the G goes as one over Q as Q goes to zero. Next is the PSO electric quadrupole electron phonon mm -hmm. interaction. This type of interaction happens because if there's a non-zero dynamical quadrupole in a solid, displacing an atom will generate a long range electric field. This type of interaction happens for all phonon modes for piezoelectric materials, and also for optical modes for non-piezoelectric materials. The strength of the G goes to a constant value as Q goes to zero in this case. Perturbo can also accurately interpolate these long range interactions. The basic idea is to separate from the total electron photon matrix elements, the short range part and the long range part. Long-range part is largely known in the literature. For example, this is the formula for the ab initio Frehlich interactions uh, for a 3D case. This is an analytical formula. So uh, what this means that if you know the foreign effective charge and the dynamical, uh, sorry, the di dielectric tensor, then you can get this G's analytically. The forms of this, uh, long range part uh, can be found in the literature for both the 3D and 2D of the Frehlich interactions and also for the piezoelectric electron phone interactions 
interactions in these references. So what we do is we compute the short range part by subtracting out the long range part from the total part. And then we use the Fourier interpolations to interpolate the short range part to a desired k prime and q prime point. And then you use the analytical formula to add back the long range part after and get the electron photon matrix elements, the total value in any arbitrary k prime and q prime points. This is an example of the interpolations of the Fairleigh interaction in gallium arsenide and MLS2. The black markers are direct DFPT calculations and the interpolated results that are in red lines are from Perturbo. You can see that the Perturbo can accurately capture this uh, sharp divergence is near the gamma point for the allo photon mode in both gallium arsenide and MOS2. Uh, so uh, this type of interaction is sharp in the reciprocal space, meaning that it will be flat and mostly long range in re real space spaces. This is an example of the interpolation of the piezoelectric quadrupole electron photon interaction in silicon. Uh, PBTIO3 and also gallium nitride. In these plots, the markers are from direct TFPT calculations, and the blue curves are from uh, interpolation without the quadruple part, and the orange lines are including the quadruple part. For all of these cases, you can see that if we do not include the quadruple part, then their interpolation will not match the TFPT results and there will be large errors. If we, after including the quadruple part, the interpolation will match the DFPT values. You can see also that this type of interaction happens for the optical modes for non-polar materials, and also in both optical and acoustic modes for piezoelectric materials such as PBTIO3 or gallium nitride. So Perturbo can accurately capture this piezoelectric electron form interactions uh, this feature is not released yet, but we have uh, we have plans to include it in the future version of Perturbo. To summarize uh, the part two theory part, the interpolation of the electron final matrix elements is crucial for both transport and dynamics. Perturbo can accurately capture both short and long range interactions, and this can be applied to broad range of materials giving comprehensive analysis for 3D bulk systems, 2D monolayer system, both non-polar and polar systems. Thank you for your attention.